posting on net or on TV that she recalled Oscar Grant grabbing her left arm and, and the panic she felt at that time. She described that after seeing the video as a re that reminded her. I mean, how likely? I'm, I'm not sure a jury is going to believe something like that because if panic sets in because someone grabbed your arm, that's a salient issue that should be in a police report. So to come back later and say, oh, I had to look at the video and then I saw him grab my arm and that enkindled that thought or that brought back that thought. That's just not believable because if in fact he did that and it engendered that type of a response, you can believe it would have been in the police report, police report right from the beginning. What the uh, what they have to be careful of, and I, and I know what the police officers are doing here, they're, they're, this is a tragic situation, tragic. When I hear words like he was executed, I, I can't go with that. I mean, I know people are polarized and saying, well, he was executed. No, not for a second, nor do I think people will believe Oscar Grant was executed. Something happened there. A measure Lee didn't reach for his gun with the intent to execute him there. That makes absolutely no sense. The big issue in this trial will be should he have reached for his weapon, whether it be the handgun or a taser. That will be the first hurdle for a jury. Then, does, does he measurely have the responsibility, the duty, after pulling what he thinks is his taser, to then take a moment and say, I do have my taser in my hand, and then use the taser. In this case, he didn't do that. That will be the next hurdle for a jury. And if the jury says that he should have stop for a, a, a nanosecond and look to see what was in his hand to be sure it was his taser, they could bring back a second degree murder conviction in this case. But there's no jury in there, Michael. There's a judge and it's a preliminary hearing. So what does the prosecution get out of trying to discredit all of these police officers at this point in the time? These witnesses are being served up on a platter to the district attorney. For purposes of preliminary hearing, really none of these witnesses should be put on. To my mind, this is pandering to the public on behalf of the defense, saying, here's our defense public, here's what the police officers are saying here, because they've been dead. So this is the only forum that they have, the only venue they have to get their story out to the public. But what that does is it allows the district attorney to cross-examination and to concretize what those police officers are going to say. So the district attorney is absolutely doing the right thing. Go through it bit by bit lock them into their story so it can't be changed between the preliminary hearing and the trial. What this will get the defense is nothing here. He will be held to answer, and he will be held to answer on murder charges. Keep you don't think mind. there's a prayer that they can get it reduced in the prelim? I absolutely do not believe that for a nanosecond. There is no chance that this judge is going to reverse that. That is my opinion. I have been wrong before. But keep in mind, reasonable suspicion that a murder was committed. The district attorney had enough after the first video and the first witness was put up. That was enough. Now to put this up, to my mind, is only getting the story out. What the defense is doing here, to my mind, is people that come in as jurors in this case, and jury selection is going to be very, very important. They will bring their past experience to the table. They will either be, say, pro police or sort of middle of the road, or I've seen police act out. So what they are doing, what the defense is doing, is putting hooks out there for them, if they want as a juror, to reduce this charge or to find measurably not guilty, they are giving them ways out. Well, look, the police were afraid. Oh, I was grabbed. I was petrified when they grabbed me. It was a horrible situation. When you look at this tape, it is what you want it to be. You can look at that tape and say, oh look, his hand moved a little. He must have been reaching for a gun, so measurely had the right to reach for either a taser or a weapon. Or you look at it and you say, there's no way he should have been doing that. It will be in the eye of the beholder, that beholder being the jury. That's why this case is so fascinating. The defense has indicated they would like to bring in a video analyst to go over the tape frame by frame by frame to break it down into what they think will be a favorable defense for what uh, the officer did. Is that advisable? I mean, again, it's
right. It sounds open to interpre interpretation. Well, it is open to interpretation, but what else do they have to do? And keep in mind, police officers have one of the most difficult jobs in the world, and they are making split-second decisions, and that's what a lot of jurors are going to think. Well, wait a minute. We put them in difficult situations. This was a difficult situation. They may well have been afraid. He sees a movement of Oscar. Oh, so I'm going to grab my weapon. Should he have done that? They will have police experts to talk about that, too, I think.